AI music editing, animated subtitles, and a whole new way of handling keyframes, DaVinci Resolve 20 is here, and for real this time, not just a beta. There's an absolute shed load of new stuff in this, but the manual is massive and ain't nobody got time for that. I'm gonna talk about what I think are the best features in version 20. I'm gonna save the best to last, so stick around. So there are two ways to get your hands on the latest version. One is to just load version 19 and it's likely to prompt you to upgrade. Or you can just come up here and click check for updates. The other is just go straight to blackmagicdesign.com and grab yourself a copy. And if you paid for the studio version, you've still got that. That's a lifetime license. They're not going to charge you for the new one. If you want to use any of these new features, you have to upgrade your actual project to version 20. The downside to that is there's no way back. So if something doesn't work, First up is the AI Music Remixer. Yes, I know Premiere Pro has had this for ages, but this is new to DaVinci Resolve and it comes in really handy if you're making a short and you want to edit down a long piece of music to something. Before, you'd have to go into your editing software, cut it in a sensible place, nick the end, stick it on the beginning, take a bit out of the middle, whatever. It was a manual job and it took a while. But now, all you need to do is drag your song onto the timeline and come over here into the inspector and look for AI Music Remixer. And you can set your target time in here and then click adjust and it'll analyze the track. And there you go, track adjusted to be the new length. But what most people are gonna find more useful is if you turn on live trim, you can adjust it on the fly on the timeline. Speaking of music, I get all of mine from the sponsor of today's video, Audio. Audio have the music to make your video stand out. Real music from real artists. Artists you've probably heard before. People like Silverberg, who've had their music in Marvel movies. On the Audio Pro plan, you can download as much music as you want and use it anywhere. We're talking YouTube videos, podcasts. You can even use it in TV adverts and movies. And once you've downloaded it, that license won't expire. Even if your subscription does, you can carry on using it. And because audio is so awesome, they've given me a code I can pass on to you to give you 70% off. If you use my link in the description and the code SAVE70, you'll get 70% off of an annual Audio Pro subscription. Yep, you heard 70%. So that brings unlimited music and unlimited sound effects. Oh yeah, did I not mention the sound effects too? <coughs> that comes in at under a cup of coffee a month. So audio, perfect for creators like you but let's get back to DaVinci. And while we're still talking music, there's another feature called Show Music Beats, and yep, it does what it sounds like it does. Back in the old days, when you wanted to edit on the beat of the music, you'd play the track through on the timeline, you'd have to tap M over and over until you got to the end of the track like some sort of caveman. But now things have changed. All you need to do is right click that track on your timeline and select Show Music Beats, and it'll put a line on the timeline every beat of the song. And you can snap anything to that, just like you could by placing a marker. Okay, on to the next one, keyframe editing. This used to be a bit of a weak point of DaVinci Resolve, but now they've completely revised it. Now you can get to your keyframes in two places. There's a keyframe tray on the timeline where you can work out where your keyframe is in relation to your clip. But up here, you've got the keyframe palette, and that's where things get a lot different, a lot better. There's lots more space now. You used to be crammed in under the clip on the timeline, but now you've got all this room. And when this space really comes into its own is when you go into keyframe curves. It's much easier to see all the keyframe points and drag them around. You can individually select them or you can just drag a box around multiple. And having all this space makes it much easier to deal with things like easing. And now obviously I'm just skimming the surface of this, but if you'd like to see this explained in more detail, let me know down in the comments. If you make a lot of short form content, you're gonna love this one, animated subtitles. Yes, you can do animated subtitles in Instagram, but this gives you so much more control. All you need to do is generate the subtitles in DaVinci Resolve the same way as you used to, and then drag one of these down onto the track. Boom, animated subtitles. And then of course you can go across into the inspector and adjust these. And while we're talking about short form content, things like reels and shorts, we've now got a vertical video layout. Of course you could drag windows around before in the older versions, but now you've got a single button that does it for you. And of course you can get back to how you were if you wanna go back to 16 by nine dead quick. One click in, one click out. Next up, Magic Mask version two. It's Magic Mask, but more. It's amazing. It's now using some AI goodness to make it even better than it was. And it was already pretty good. There's no drawing lines on your subject anymore. You just drop a couple of pins, hit that track button, and away you go. Depending on your computer, it can take a while, but damn, it's worth the wait. It's got really good at picking things off of complex backgrounds. So those are what I think are the best new features in DaVinci Resolve 20. If you think I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments. And while you're down there, if you drop a like, that'll make me very happy. But for now, that's it from me. I'll see you next time. Bye.